So, a few weeks ago, I received the Creality CR10 Smart. I will try to give you my best and unbiased first impressions on this machine, from the unboxing experience, putting it together, and the general performance of this 3D printer. Even though the box had a few shipping marks, the interior was well packaged and intact. Inside, you will find the user manual, a small roll of filament, together with the tools and hardware to put the printer together. Here we have the spool holder bracket. some screws, the power cable, LCD screen, and stabilization rods. The two main components, the X and Z axis frame and the main body which weighs about 10 kilograms, came already pre-assembled. To fix them together, you have to insert the four provided M5 by 45 screws. I'm using this inflatable cushion just to help me a bit, but it's not required. You can simply tilt the printer for this. The two pull rods are fixed in place with M5 round head screws and tightened up to keep the printer square. Ideally, you should use a square ruler to make sure the Z axis is straight up. To install the spool holder, you use the provided V slot screws. The holder actually has a sturdy and stable feeling to it. All you have to do next is to connect all harnesses, the main carriage, and all sensors. C stepper motor photoelectric limit switch whoops the second C stepper motor and the LCD screen The CR10 Smart actually uses a regular SD card slot to transfer the files, but I have only used this feature once, you'll see what I mean. I found myself looking for the provided tools in the box, but it turned out that they came neatly stored in a tiny drawer in the front. These cutting pliers might actually look smaller if you have big hands. Something I really appreciated is the fact that the drawer closes up with the help of magnets. Yay, magnets! An interesting feature is that both C stepper motors are connected through a drive belt, so there's no issue with the X bar being skewed. Both X and Y belts have tension adjusters, and the machine turns on with this nice power button, additionally to the main switch in the back. The user interface seems pretty clear to me, and easy to understand if you already had your first 3D printing experience. Before starting the auto leveling, you have to make sure all six V-slot wheels are tight. Otherwise, the leveling will fail because the bed will tend to move a little bit. This can be a bit tricky, but with a bit of patience, there shouldn't be any troubles. This 300 by 300 by 400 bed does not come with adjusting knobs, so everything will be done by the printer itself. The machine will create a mesh of 16 points and compensate any misalignments with the software. My first very large print took about two days, and because I'm an exceptionally intelligent person, I accidentally disconnected the machine, so after turning it back on, it automatically resumed where it left off, and that's why you can see this line where that happened. That was actually a pleasant surprise. If you decide to use the smart functionality of the printer and open a Creality account, you can search and upload models and have them sliced on your smartphone. The visualization of the 3D model is not as detailed as on the PC, but it provides a quick view if you want to print something quick. The printing profiles are pretty well tuned, and the available settings are a bit limited, but it's enough if you are printing something quick and simple.
Another file transfer option, and the one that I have been using the most, is through the Creality Cloud Integration plugin in Cura. This does not change in any way how I prepare and slice the models. I can use all parameters I am used to, but the main difference is that I don't have to save the file in my computer or in any SD card. All I have to do is to save it on my Creality Cloud. I find it very useful that you can see how the G-code looks like, so I don't have to worry a lot about the naming of the file. You can even see and change some printing parameters directly on the app before or during the print, as well as the current layer and print progress. Overall, I could barely notice any difference between the CR10 cloud slicing profile and my own Cura profile quality. After the print is finished, you usually receive a notification on your smartphone and a summary of the model you just printed. Finally, something I wasn't really expecting is for the printer to have a built-in LED light. I think it's pretty cool. Here is a side-by-side -side comparison of the model I sliced within the app and the one I sliced in Cura. The only visible change is the seam alignment as well as the raft size, which I set differently. I also decided not to use supports on the one I sliced in Cura because it wasn't necessary. Overall, nice smooth results. The only negative aspect I have found so far is that the fans are pretty loud compared to other 3D printers, but that's pretty much everything you hear. This is my first YouTube review. If you have any thoughts or questions, please leave them in the comments. Also, let me know if you find this review helpful. Thanks for watching. Adios.